This is our outdoor space, and this is our outdoor chair. Technically, we have two. The birds have used this as their toilet several times. There's also a hole in this chair. We can find a functional way to make this work. Do you know what time it is? I think it's like 8.30. I think it's sledgehammer time. Let's go. Now that we've destroyed our outdoor chairs and we have nothing to sit in, we've got to build something new. This chair will be very simple yet functional enough to hold the weight of a human, which is what we want it to do. So anybody with a few basic tools can construct this. We knew that we didn't want an Adirondack chair. We wanted something more modern. And so after hours of scouring the internet for other inspiration, sketching up a few ideas of our own, we finally landed on something that's actually based off of the measurements of our pre-existing chair. So we're gonna take those measurements and we're going to build something fresh, something new, so let's get started. For this project, you're only going to need three different types of wood. The first is pressure treated two by fours. The second is going to be pressure treated two by six and then pressure treated deck boards. The seat portion of our pre-existing chair was about 19 inches by 19 inches. I felt like that was a good size for an average butt. And so we are going to construct this seat based, based off those measurements, 19 inches by 19 inches. Our first two cuts are going to be for the front and the back sections of our seat. And those are gonna be measured at 19 inches. Also the material for the seat section, we're just gonna be using the two by four and the deck boards. Next up, we're constructing the sides for the seat base, and these are going to be measured at 16 inches. Now it's a 19 inch by 19 inch frame. The reason why it's 16 inches is because number one, we're going to put it together on the inside of our front and back piece. So you have to account for the thickness of your material, which is technically not two by four, it's technically one and a half by three and a half. So if you multiply one and a half times two, you're gonna get three inches. Subtract three inches from 19, you get 16. You probably already knew that, but just in case you didn't, hopefully that was not confusing, clear as mud. Let me know in the comments. Next up, we're gonna take care of our slats. These are gonna be cut at 16 inches. And this is essentially what the seat base is going to look like once we put it together. Testing it out here, it seems to fit exactly how I thought it would. Next up, we're gonna work on the back section, similar to the seat section. It's just gonna be our two by four material and the deck boards. I want the chair to have a slope and it seems like most chairs from what I've researched have like a 15 degree angle for the back. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna shoot for that 15 degree angle. I have a scrap piece here that I'm cutting. You can see my miter saw set to 15 degrees and basically I have to cut it at an angle. That section that I'm removing is going to butt up against the back side of our seat. This piece here is the back side of our seat and it's just a hair over three and a half inches, three and nine sixteenths. So we'll take our material and measure three and nine sixteenths. Normally we cut parallel to the fence of our miter saw. This time we're going to cut perpendicular. If you're not comfortable doing this, use a track saw or use a handheld saw, whatever. It's going to make you feel more comfortable. But after we make that cut, it should look something like this. After that, we're gonna do the back slats. These are the same as our seat slats. We're only gonna cut three of them and those are gonna be cut at 16 inches. Moving along to the legs of our chair, we'll start with the front legs. These are gonna be cut at 19 and a half. Our pre-existing chair, I really liked where the seat sat uh, at the height. It was at 14 inches and then the armrests were at 21 inches. So we're gonna go based off of those measurements. Now to the back legs. Things are about to get dicey. So if you struggle with math, fasten your seat belts. 
We'll be using the Pythagorean theorem, oh gosh, to find the length of our back legs. Luckily, we already know the length of our front legs, 21 inches. We know the angle of our armrest and our front leg is 90 degrees. And we do want this chair to be level so we can assume that this bottom angle between the earth and the bottom of our front leg is 90 degrees as well. We then can safely assume that these two angles are both 45 degrees. For the sake of my brain and possibly yours too, I'm gonna finish out this triangle. We know that this side and the top are both 21 inches. And then plugging in all of our numbers, we find that C is equal to 29.69 or roughly 29 and 11 sixteenths. Now, before we go cutting this material, we have to account for the thickness of our armrest. It's a two by four, again, it's an inch and a half. So we need to subtract an inch and a half from that 29 and 11 sixteenths. That gives us 28 and three sixteenths. And again, it's an outdoor chair. It doesn't have to be perfect. If it's gonna be easier for you to just round to that eighth, the 28 and an eighth, go for that. I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna say it's 28 and one eighth. We're also gonna be using our two by six material for these back legs. For the armrest, I knew I wanted to have an inch and a half overhang in the front and then somewhere around three to five inches of an overhang in the back with a nice little 45 degree miter. And so this is gonna be roughly around 30 inches. I think this there's wiggle room in this. I think there's room for play for your own preference if you want it to look a little bit longer or you want it to butt up against the back side of your seat whatever works best for you, whatever you prefer. I'm shooting for about 30 inches here. Now it's on to every woodworker's favorite process and that's the sanding process. We're gonna start with 120 grit and we're actually just gonna stop at 120 grit. You could start at 80, but I think 120 is perfectly fine. Remember, this is an outdoor chair. It's not fine woodworking. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're using rough lumber. We just wanna make sure that the stain, whenever we do stain it, will soak into the wood really well. And then whenever someone sits in it, they don't get a splinter in their butt. Then we gotta take them to the hospital and there's insurance and there's this whole whole thing so sanding make sure you sand we want to take a quick second to thank today's sponsor for this video thank you to fake money aka credit cards for sponsoring this video we are broke we have no money and so we had to use fake money to be able to fund buy the material to make this project happen so thank you fake money fake money is available to anyone and everyone out there you can get fake money all all over the internet basically and apply and you'll get fake money in the mail we don't advise using fake money because it is a bad decision there are side effects to using fake money oftentimes people will experience symptoms such as interest stress unhappiness so thank you to fake money for sponsoring today's video <laughs> There are a myriad of ways that we could put this thing together. And we're gonna use pocket hole screws because it's easy. You wanna just go with some wood screws and throw it in there. You wanna use half lap joints, full lap, quarter lap, uh, dowels, whatever method you wanna use to put this thing together, go for it. If you wanna make sure this thing is gonna be super sturdy, you can throw in some Type Bond 3, some outdoor wood glue, and we're gonna make sure we use the pocket screws that are rated for outdoor use. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another day. Uh, yesterday we had to call it quits a little early because we were getting tired and it was really windy here in the carport. It's still a little bit windy, but we were able to get the seat constructed yesterday. I'm in my water and my Pop-Tarts. I'm eating Pop-Tarts like a, like a fifth grader. Here is the seat. I think it's looking pretty good. This thing is gonna be very heavy and they, they are fresh two by fours too. So eventually they'll, they'll dry out a little bit and it should lighten up. But today we're gonna try to wrap this thing up. We're gonna do the sides and the back. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. This would be the perfect time to have one of those attachments for my drill that does a right angle or left angle angle whatever you call it but i don't have that at all you know you know what i'm saying like the drill it's got a little on it and then i could have just like put it up maybe that still wouldn't have worked i don't know There 
we have it. Our chair is complete. Um, for these slats, I did, it was about an inch and an eighth of a gap between these two. A little bit more significant than this, which is about more like a half inch, but you'll never really see this because I think we're gonna put a cushion there and then possibly just a small pillow here. Yeah, I think it looks great. It's definitely sturdy. It is also very, very heavy right now. This has to be like 50, 60 pounds. I'm just gonna tilt it. Okay, it's not that heavy, but it is heavy. Actually, let's take it out here in, this, oh gosh, in the sun on a level surface. Apologies for the extreme brightness outside right now. Oh, okay. The slats for the seats seem pretty sturdy. Um, those supports I think are gonna help in the long run, but I'm 190 pounds, give or take. 190 pound proof right here. Probably Desmond proof too. But is it comfortable? At first the seat was slanted just a little bit and I leveled it. I'm almost wishing I would have just left it. Cool. I feel like the armrests need to be a little bit higher. I'm not too sure about this. It's a chair, you know, you can sit in it. Is it comfortable? No, this is not comfortable at all. I would not want to sit here for a long period of time unless there was a cushion. Yeah, this is not comfortable at all. Oh my, what a difference. This is, this is night and day for me. This is way more comfortable, holy smokes. So long story short, Jess got home and we both analyzed the chair and tried to decide what we wanted to do. Uh, we know we want to go with a, a modern chair, not an Adirondack chair. So the seat, needed, we wanted it to be level. And so I tried that, I tried to un, un, undo the seat from the sides and lower it to see what it would look like. It fit better but it, it just kind of messed up some of the, the rest of the design. And on top of that, the armrests were still a little bit too low. I had to go back to Lowe's to get some more material because I did not have enough. The game plan was to basically raise the armrests up about three inches. We both kind of like sat in here and tested it out a little bit as to what would be just a natural comfort level, but it is, it is immensely way more comfortable. Having that support for your elbows makes the seat feel much better. And we are gonna put a cushion here, so. Oh yeah, that's, that, this is comfortable. Basically what we did is we calculated about three additional inches on the armrest. Now I did not change the actual armrest. The only thing I changed were the legs. So this front leg and the back leg. The front leg is about 19 and a half. So I just added three inches to that. The back leg was about 28 and a, an eighth. So I just added three inches to that. So that was 31 and an eighth. And then just redid the pocket hole screws and reconnected all of it. And we got ourselves a functional chair. My only beef is now that we had to raise this this section up, you can tell that the armrest doesn't have the extension, the overlap that I would like for it to have. Originally, it was sitting out about three inches from here, and this is a 15 degree angle, so it was like, it was out to here. But now, because we raised it up, and it's encroaching on this angle, it's gonna meet this board a little bit sooner. If I were to make it again, I would definitely make this more like 33 inches. It's a little design feature that it's preference. If you're gonna make this chair and you, you don't like how this looks right now, just add three inches. That's what she said. <laughs> it is my shining moment. It is finally time for us to stain our lovely chair. We have a stain here in Pine Bark by Valspar. I'll try and show it for you guys. It literally looks like a can of doo-doo. Uh, we opened it up. We thought it looked absolutely terrible. And then we put it on a test piece and we wiped it down. Obviously you have to do all the things, let it dry a little bit. And it looks much better, much better than the poop that was straight out of the can. We're gonna go forward with using this stain for now. We think it's gonna look good. If we absolutely hate it in the long run, uh, yeah, we will just sand it down and do something different. I'm really excited to see how this turns out. I was hoping the stain would be a little bit shinier. <laughs> Dustin's falling back there. I was hoping the stain was gonna be a little bit shinier because it is a stain and sealer, uh, but I think we might have to get a protective finish because I was hoping for something that kind of glowed a little bit more. Let's get to staining.
And that's a wrap. From vision to reality, we loved every second of this chair build. Now on to bigger and better projects, we have to update our backyard to have something beautiful to look at. Yes, there's a lot of work to do back here. A lot of things that we want to do. Maybe another fire pits, maybe a deck, who knows? Make sure you subscribe, hit the like button if you want to see all of those projects, maybe this year. Yeah, this year, we're on it. We'll see y'all in the next DIY project. How does the chair feel? It feels really good. Somebody didn't build a second one though. I didn't know I was supposed to build two. Guess I'll just sit here. This one does not have as big of a hole in it, so until we can build a second one, which I guess, I guess I'll go build another one right now. Enjoy that chair for the time being.